learn about the newest digital pathology trends in science and industry, meet the most interesting people in the niche, and gain insights relevant to your own projects. Here is where pathology meets computer science. You are listening to the Digital Pathology Podcast with your host, Dr. Alexandra Zhurov. Hello, Gabe. It's so nice to have you on the podcast. How are you today? Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. So tell the listeners first uh, something about yourself. About myself? Well, I'm a young guy, 39 years old, just had my birthday. Mm-hmm. And Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when was it? Thank you. August 22nd. Oh, okay. Happy birthday again. Yeah, I have, uh, I have another year and still, until I'm um, supposed to start feeling uh, older. But No, it doesn't work that way anymore. No, no, it doesn't yeah. work that way anymore. They say 40 is the new 30, and then probably in 10 years, they're going to say 50 is the new 30. So no worries. This doesn't work like that anymore. That's good to know. Okay. Feeling comforted. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm the CEO and founder of Augmentix. We've uh, been around for a few years now. I uh, started the company in uh, 2016. The background before starting the company was uh, marketing, marketing a uh, medical device. Mm-hmm. And there have been a number of different fields which, which I was involved in, whether it's like medical aesthetics or more like, uh, maybe like invasive technologies. With the last uh, company that I was working at prior to starting Augmentix being a digital pathology company. Mm-hmm. And it was the experience being there and getting to know a little bit about the field that brought me to the idea of Augmentix and eventual eventual founding of the company. Okay, great. So tell us about the company a little bit. So we are a a young company. We are, have a, seven seven employees right now, mm-hmm. and we we had like a a really interesting beginning of it because and this this really ties into. Uh, the, ro- the role that I had in the prior company, which I, w- I was a marketing manager and trying to introduce uh, this company's digital pathology technology to the market. And we'd go to trade shows, uh, be in different labs, pathology labs, and the response, which was received by pathologists when seeing this other technology, were things along the lines of, well, in 90% of instance, instances, I don't need you, and 10%, I don't trust you. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, like, it would, if you were to talk with pathologists about maybe having like a beta site, just like, please take the, the technology and let's, uh, let's do some uh, testing on it, just use it without without any cost. There would generally be like a, sort of like a, a pushback even to that. And as in, like, no, don't don't place it here. We're, we're not going to use it. it. It's not of interest. And that's... It's very disheartening to to someone in marketing to to hear those types of comments, and that just led me to to think not only about the particular technology of where where I was working uh, prior to Augmentix, but digital pathology as a whole is is digital pathology really fitting the needs of the of the pathologist, or or to say it differently, is digital pathology is the problem with digital pathology that it doesn't fit the workflow of the pathologist, and and is that the reason? That they're not interested in uh, in adapting this these technologies. Mm-hmm. It was it was that premise that that led me to to the idea of Augmentix, which was let's develop a technology, digital pathology, that fits the workflow of the pathologist. And this was back prior to FDA um, approving primary diagnosis via whole slide imaging. And it was still the the diagnosis had to be done on the on the microscope. Mm-hmm. And that was two thousand and seventeen when the first got the approval. Okay. Mm-hmm. So right. So Augmentix, we we started the company in twenty sixteen, but even before starting the company, when it was just an idea, it was how do we integrate digital pathology within the within the microscope? We need the we need the the microscope for the for make for the primary diagnosis. But there's still a lot of value that can be done with uh, integrating, let's say, computer-assisted diagnosis, uh, with uh, allowing the pathologist to make a, a more accurate or, or quantitative analysis of different samples. 
so that was that was the idea to to integrate the the ability for for patho uh, digital pathology within the workflow within the microscope. And with that, the, the idea started to roll until until the company was formed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, where are you located, and where do you offer your products? So the, right now, we well, the I'll start from the beginning. The company was founded in Israel. Mm -hmm. is, Israel's a amazing place. Where it's a it's a small geographic area. So the the the, all the, 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 the right people with the backgrounds who are, are very diverse for, for any type of company are all within a very close radius, a geographic radius of, uh, of each other. So it, it's very, a, a company like ours, which is uh, it's a combination of uh, both uh, software and uh, electro optics, we was very, was very fortunate to find, to find the, like, people with these different backgrounds and, and like, very close to each other. Mm -hmm. And to be able to to start the company with them, but uh, to date we we also have offices in Rochester, New York. Okay, it is said that Tel Aviv is being the the Silicon Valley of the old continent. There are many many, like you say, tech startups, uh, high tech companies uh, booming there at the moment. That's right. It, it's unbelievable. You, sometimes it feels like. It's it's the it's the anomaly to meet someone who doesn't have a startup. <laughs> Everywhere you go, everyone has a startup. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a very exciting uh, atmosphere. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of innovation, always looking to to improve upon things. And with uh, I guess overall the the um, what would be the word the um it's not coming to mind, but the overall feel, the overall vibe of the of the country here is it's one of innovation and so the people are very open to, to startups and it makes it easier to, to get things off the ground i definitely want to visit i didn't know that before i started my blog which was the beginning of this year 2019 and then i got in touch with different people doing digital pathology in different forms and variation and i'm like from Israel, another one from Israel, and then I <laughs> learned that, that there is a lot going on in Israel. Uh, it's unbelievable. I, I was at the the last um, last cap show, and I, I couldn't believe how many Israeli companies were represented there. It was wow. it was shocking. Well, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, what yeah, about so, the product? Okay. So location is Israel and the U.S. at the moment. And what about the products? Where do you offer them? Everywhere. We have uh, products uh, placed in uh, Asia, Europe, uh, North America. And we're hoping to even have a uh, product placed in Africa. Oh, wow. Okay. So definitely worldwide. So what is the mission of Augmentics? And why is this mission important for you? Tell me about this a little bit. Okay. So... Going back to, to the reason for why Augmentix was, was founded, it comes down to, to workflow, to improve the workflow for the pathologist, to allow them, whether it's to work faster or to reach a better diagnosis, and to do this in a method which is cost-effective and mm -hmm. um, really bring clinical, both clinical and, and I guess, uh, economic value to, to the lab. So that that's the overall mission. It's to it could be called just when I, when I I would even say when describing the product how how we describe the product. Well, we're like a low cost platform for multi directional communication between the microscope and the PC. We mm -hmm. have a microscope which is it's, a, it's essentially an analog technology, right? It, it's glass and light, and then you have pathology, which is arguably the most subjective science. So mm -hmm. you have, we, have, we have a device which you can't put in or, or take out information combined with the fact that what one pathologist sees is almost by, you could almost be like guaranteed that another pathologist will not see the same thing. True. And, <laughs> yes. We have a really funny story with that. I'll get back to it after I finish this. So okay. It's the, the, the mission of, of the company, it's, it's to, to offer a low cost solution for, for digitizing the microscope workflow. And, and that's, that's the idea. It's to, to put a system into the existing microscope, to integrate with, within the microscope, and while not in any way 
changing the optical quality of the microscope or the functionality of the of the instrument now allowing a complete range of uh of digital uh, tool sets with uh within the old microscope which was sitting on every pathologist's desk mm -hmm. you said that uh, when you were uh, working in the digital pathology space before founding this company that you had a lot of resistance to the classical digital pathology platform do you find that there is less right now or there is no such big difference well, in for our company, I, I would say that there isn't resistance to the technology, but there is resistance to any type of change or mm -hmm. meaning. Meaning, when when showing our technology to pathologists, we I, I'm not receiving the same feedback mm -hmm. uh, that, that as was what was received what prior. I, was I, I would even say the opposite, about... mm -hmm. right? I would even say the opposite. There's there's generally like overall uh, across the board excitement with uh, generally like complete understanding of why this would be of value to, to the pathologist. Uh, but that, that's still a, a pretty far step from, uh, from sale and, uh, mm -hmm. and integration in any pathology lab. Okay. So now, well, the integration is probably always the, the most challenging part, but mm -hmm. one hurdle overcome. <laughs> that's a lot in the pathology world. Uh, I mentioned that we, that we had a funny story. Yes, this yes, was, tell the story. So in one of the the first trade shows that we went to, it's actually, I believe it was the STP event, and we're there in a in a room. Be, before the actual exhibition starts, there's a, like a get-together of the pathologists, and they would put a picture of a lesion or tissue on the wall, and then the pathologists would vote as to what the definition of the lesion is. And so I don't remember if like we sort of snuck into the room or exactly what the story was, but we were there and we're looking at the, at this event take place and the pictures on the wall. And now there's six different possible answers as to what could be the definition or the right, the right definition to, to what's being presented. And there was almost like sort of like a, an even distribution among a, a room full of pathologists. As to what the, what the definition of the, of this lesion is. Now it tur it turned out at the end that there were two correct possible correct answers. Okay. And, but but still, like, you're looking at this at this distribution, and then you, like you realize, like, oh my, fifty percent of this room would, I guess, be incorrect as to how they, they defined what they're looking at. So it, it that just it really um, goes to show how subjective pathology is. It and is. That's why there is there are two more boards for cases like this. You get more people to to consider all the aspects to vote, and then you usually uh, do not have a unanimous vote. That's right. That's a that's a very interesting. But that's aspect pathology. Of pathology. Yes. And that's pathology, definitely. And and that, and that, but it, but it is that aspect of pathology that really played a, a major role in, in the development of our product in that while I, I guess I would even say like while we initially the initial idea for the product was augmented reality of the microscope eye piece the ability to display computer assisted diagnosis within the microscope think like google glass for microscopes while looking at it let's say an IHC sample to be able to to run computer assisted diagnosis and to see the actual um segmentation or, or percentage or counting within the eyepiece as a digital overlay mm -hmm. um, on top of the optical plane. However, once we were seeing scenes like this and, and talking with more and more pathologists, we sort of reached uh, an understanding that you know, maybe what pathologists need more than any type of objective uh, or quantitative tool is more the ability to to communicate and interact in real time because the subjective nature of the uh, of the work makes uh, collaboration and communication apparently much more uh, valuable to a pathologist than uh, than uh, and to other professions and, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. that yeah generally work in teams yeah you might be right I mean there you need a special setup for collaboration. Like you say, this is not the part of the workflow. If it was, maybe that would help um, for whatever it could help, like consultation with somebody who has more experience 
whatever mm -hmm. uh, would be possible. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, it, it, especially like where some of the use case for the product today, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later more, is let's say a, a frozen section where the pathologist on call just is not an expert in that particular uh, type of tissue. And now mm -hmm. the ability to, to consult in real time and to, to get an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What went wrong that set you up for success? What did go wrong at the beginning that you don't do anymore? Um, but what uh, helped you come up with some solution that is now in use? <laughs> If you have something like that, maybe everything went smooth. I mean, I wish you that everything yeah, right. goes smooth. <laughs> but usually it doesn't, regardless of what you do. So that's why I'm asking. It's not that it usually doesn't. It never does. <laughs> nothing <laughs> Nothing goes smooth. Um, yeah, we, we were, were younger and um, more naive when we first started the company. And we were under the impression that this is just the greatest thing ever, what we've done. And it's just such an, a, a no-brainer that we'll reach sales immediately and everyone will be <laughs> wanting our <laughs> just We won't be able to keep up with the man. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't actually uh, it doesn't work like that. There's um, a lot of things that go into uh, moving from having a, a nice concept and even a nice technology or a great technology that, that really works well, but actually to make, to making a product that, that really, it, it needed, it has to be a complete answer to uh, whether it's from like the business side, the sales side, the marketing side, a uh, technology side to, to really, um, to succeed in, in, in any field. And especially, especially here in digital technology, we mm -hmm. it is a conservative field and take up the, the take up rate of, of the new technologies is, uh, probably slower than let's say the technology sector in you know, Silicon Valley. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it, there's a lot that goes into, uh, into making the company and, and the product, uh, getting it to a point where we'll be uh, adapted by, by pathologists. And uh, we've had, we've had a, a pretty nice uh, learning curve mm -hmm. uh, in, in that respect. But we were, we were sort of, it, it wasn't only that, okay, it, that we were close to the product and we were thinking, you know, this is, this is great. It, it works. The, the initial feedback from pathologists looking at this, even at like the first shows is very, very positive. Like pathologists would see the product. They were, we heard things from, from very, very well respected pathologists such as, wow, this is the greatest thing ever. This is amazing. <laughs> and, <laughs> but then to go from there to, <laughs> To, to anything of uh, of this uh, is uh, is uh, well Another didn't necessarily step. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, step 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 you have to work on. It didn't happen. Right. <laughs> they will. Mm -hmm. I, I think when the value is recognized and the change management is difficult, probably in the, in every professional group, so it may take some time. Okay. Yeah. So maybe a little bit more technical details about the product. What is your product? What do you offer? offer? And okay. who is your uh, target customer? So Augmentix, to start, Augmentix is, is a, it's a combined hardware and software solution. The, the hardware is, it's an electro-optical module. And what it does is it, is integrated into the existing microscope. And it, and it could be any existing, like any infinity corrected microscope. It doesn't make a difference which brand, uh, Olympus, Nikon, uh, Leica. The one, one question. Well, an electro optical module is a camera, right? Well, it's or more than it's a camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's more than, it's I more let than you, a camera. I let you speak, but okay, more than a camera. We, we could call it, we could call it a box. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a box which is placed inside the existing microscope, mm -hmm. and at, at the very at, at its very basic um, level, it doesn't change the optical quality of the microscope. So it was I guess first just like a quick uh, intro uh, explanation as to how it's integrated. The the eyepiece the ocular of the microscope is taken off. It the our system is placed. Underneath, you know, above above the nose piece, and then the ocular 
is placed back on top of the system. So the ocular closes in, the eyepiece closes in the system on top of the microscope. Mm -hmm. so I will put the picture in the, in the um, show notes later. Excellent. So what's happening in terms of the, the optics is the light from the microscope continues to go up to the, the eyepiece the eyepieces of the of the of the microscope in in the same in the same way as before. There's no change to optical quality. What what is happening is a portion of the light is being taken to a camera, and that camera is connected to to the pathologist's computer. So what the what we're able to do is to take out a live image of the of the region of interest for every magnification. And, and and this is, and this is a live feed. What, mm -hmm. in addition to to the ability to take this information out, we're also putting information into the microscope, and this is being done by way of augmented reality of the optical plane, or a projection system that is taking digital information from the computer and projecting it inside the system, such that when looking through the eyepiece of the microscope, you're the pathologist is still seeing the same optical uh, quality of the tissue, but now he has the ability to have a, a digital overlay projected on top while looking through the eyepiece and then using the computer mouse be able to make any type of digital uh, information appear inside, inside the microscope. So this could be morphometrics, uh, annotations, cell counting, uh, some type of uh, segmentation of, of the color. Uh, what, whatever whatever the pathologist chooses. So, so right now, it's really like the multi-directional communication in the sense that we're taking information out, but also putting information in. And in addition to that, another aspect of the of the system is the ability to track what is happening on the microscope stage. So that would include the ability to know which objective is currently being used, the magnification, mm -hmm. and the seeing the slide label and also tracking the XY movement of the slide on the stage. So when you have these three components of the hardware, which is the, the main camera, the augmented reality, and also the ability to track what's going on the, the stage, we have a, a platform similar in concept to, you think of a, a smartphone, where it's a hardware platform, but now we're able to run any type of software application directly from the microscope because we're connected to the, to the computer. Mm -hmm. And and then we're able to utilize all three components of the hardware for, for different aspects of the software. So so for example, one of the, the software applications which which we have is real time telepathology. And we have this is a, a software application which we developed in house and it's really unique to the as to the particular um, particularities of of a, a pathology. So, and with that, it has many advantages over, let's say, a third act of the camera with a screen sharing application in the sense that it's multi-directional, meaning what is being viewed um, by the, or let's say the remote viewer is seeing what's happening inside the microscope. But because we're able to present information also going back into the microscope, the remote viewer is able to make a, an annotation on their computer screen. And this will be presented back into the eyepiece of the of the pathologist so mm -hmm. like let's say there is remote expert is saying look, over here is the region of interest and they'll make uh, an arrow that arrow will appear to be able to direct the the, the pathologist or the user at the microscope where where to look mm -hmm. uh, there we also the the software application itself is one of the, i guess you think like the issues of of uh of screen sharing applications is that it's, it's a video feed it's very important to have um, constant, constant uh, movement of the of the screen. However, in order to to do that, there's a very heavy compression. Generally, there's a loss, a heavy loss of pixels. So the remote viewers are seeing uh, not necessarily the same image or an image of much lower quality. And our technology really is is, is made for the this aspect of of telepathology, and that an unlimited number of viewers, regardless of internet. Uh, bandwidth are able to see an image of at full resolution and there's lossless compression for the remote viewer mm -hmm. and another aspect is that our camera as opposed to I guess like a standard third ocular camera is seeing almost the entire 
uh, field of view as seen in the microscope uh, eyepiece. Mm -hmm. So when the remote viewers are looking at their screen at the at the digital image, they're seeing almost exactly what's being viewed inside the microscope as opposed to sort of a coned in image where it's not for sure that both parties are, if the, well, if the user at the microscope is using the microscope, it's not for sure that they're going to be really looking at like the, the same or getting the same perspective of what's, of what's being uh, viewed inside the microscope. So these are all like different aspects of, uh, of telepathology that we, that we took into account when, when creating the, 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 this application. But more so than just software applications, which, which we've developed as a company, we really see the platform of the hardware as the ability to, to support other software applications. So what we've started doing is, we, well, we have an open API and the ability to take other companies' software and integrate their software directly inside so the pathologist could choose, let's say, uh, it's a quantitative application like uh, QPath or ImageJ to mm -hmm. utilize those algorithms directly inside the microscope. and. Wow. And also, but not just that, not just like sort of like the open source uh, algorithms, but even companies that are doing more proprietary, AI, mm -hmm. yeah, we're able to work with them and to support their applications and deploy those applications within the microscope as well. Oh, wow. This is uh, unseen. At least I haven't seen something like that uh, so far. Before mm -hmm. I ask you if you even have any competition, um, you mentioned that you may be having a system in Africa soon. Can you say something more about that? Uh, yeah, we are actually interested in donating a system to a hospital in Africa for telepathology consultations with uh, with the lab in the United States. So we're hoping that the, we're hoping that it works out, and uh, but we're moving forward with it. Oh, wow. I keep my fingers crossed. Um, in one of the previous episodes, uh, I interviewed the founder of XWOW, which is an organization that makes microscopes available to places where there are no microscopes. And I actually mm -hmm. donated my old one. So I keep my fingers crossed for, uh, for your uh, project as well. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it'll be a really nice story to be able to to do like a, a very high level telepathology and also, but it's also like a very cost efficient and to be able to provide that to, to Africa. So that'd be great if it works mm -hmm. out. That would be so cool. And do you even have competition? I mean, I haven't seen, <laughs> I so, haven't seen such a system uh, targeting these needs that you were just describing. So uh, for me at the moment, it's difficult to say, okay, this company Augmentix is competing with the other company. I don't see. Maybe I just right. don't know the market enough, but tell me more about it. So this is a really interesting story. We, uh, let's say, it's already a couple years back, I guess 2017, and we, we filed a patent. Mm -hmm. So this is, I guess this is a provisional. And, and then at, at, at the end of the provisional, now it goes to what's called a PCT. So when and when that happens, there's a, a publication, meaning it, it, the provisional, the, the first submission of, of this provisional is, is hidden. No one is able to, to see what's written. And then when it goes to the PCT stage, it's, it's, uh, it's published. And, and other companies are able to, to see what is inside this uh, patent application. Mm -hmm. So this is um, it, on the, like a couple days after the the provisional went was published, I noticed that there is a bunch of uh, entries to our website from uh, from the area of San Francisco, Silicon Valley. Uh -huh. And following that, there were at the at the trade show in Vancouver, uh, the US Cap show, and some guys from Google come over to the booth to, to look at what we're doing. And so we're having, having a nice conversation and they sort of uh, say, you know, what you're offering is, makes sense. It's correct in that the, let's, and this goes into like where digital pathology is today, mm -hmm. but Google, Google's a software company and, and they're in, they were interested or maybe still are interested in artificial intelligence uh, for pathology, but mm -hmm. they realized that they did. Uh... For, so for all they the companies, some work on that. Mm -hmm. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. 
so so they were involved in that. They had a they had a team working on this, and but but there's a realization that for all the different software AI companies which are out there, they they all have the same problem, in that they're hardware dependent. Without without there being a hardware um, platform upon which AI is going to run, the algorithm is of no value. So even even if there's the most amazing algorithm and everything is fantastic and it just could diagnose every possible uh, cancer out there, um, without a platform upon which it's going to run, it will never be used. So uh, now the issue is okay. We're we look at like the systems like Philips and uh, Aperio. So these are these are large, expensive systems now. And when looking at the mass market of pathology, it, it's very unlikely that uh, unless like these costs go down, and not just the hardware costs, but all the costs involved of whole slide imaging goes down to such a point that every lab, uh, whether it's in India, Brazil, China, or, or the U.S., could could have these systems um, on site, then the algorithms will never be run. So, so basically, this is this is the bottleneck for for artificial intelligence. It, it's having a deployment of hardware. So Google realized that, that Google realized this, and they came to our booth because they were trying to work on the, on the same concept of uh, augmented reality inside the microscope with the ability to deploy artificial intelligence directly inside the microscope. So uh, this was uh, you can say like going back to who is our competitor, direct competitor? Well, almost Google. However, it, it's, it appears that that development by, by Google might, may have been, uh, I'm not, I haven't heard like any news from them. So I, I'm thinking that they may have stopped the development. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's like the closest competitor in sense of like the, trying to work on the same concept, the same product that, that at least that I'm aware of. In, but when looking at like the, the bigger picture of uh, com competition for, for our company, so then I guess everything that could, any other technology which could be used could be a competition in a sense in that there's a limited amount of budget for every, for every pathology lab and That's you have to decide true. where you're going to a good put your point. fund. You choose it's one thing, you will not choose the other thing regardless what that is. That's right. And it doesn't even have to do with a, a competition in terms of funds, but just like in terms of bandwidth or uh, new technologies, there's a limit to what uh, people are, are willing to, to learn and integrate and adapt. And if, you, if there's a decision made to, to go on a certain type of technology, then even if that technology turns out to be a complete mistake and it's just going to be collecting dust in the corner, um, that's not going to change that <laughs> another technology will not will, is not going to be integrated because there's no use of the of the original uh, technology that was taken. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so in that sense, there there is uh, competition, uh, and then and then also status quo and education is very it's very hard to, to make any change, mm -hmm. even even change that looks uh, very promising. And quick question uh, regarding the platform your system runs on. I know you have the uh, came more than the camera uh, optical electrical unit as the hardware, but um, is there anything else necessary? What about the computational power of the lab computers? So this depends uh, on the on the application which is going to be run by by the system. Mm -hmm. So for basic applications, the the existing PC. Of the pathologist will be fine, and so our, our system connects to the microscope and is connected to the PC, and then that's it. It will run applications, whether it's you know, basic quantitative analysis or um, telepathology. It, it should it should run fine, and there are there are basic system operating requirements. But, um, mm -hmm. but this isn't like it's no not different it's not than a, a normal lab computer that you a, exactly. Have. Once once dealing with with artificial intelligence. Then the story changes because, and this goes back to, to the problem of, of, of uh, adaption of artificial intelligence, whether it's on whole slide imaging, but even if uh, the adaption of uh, running artificial intelligence with our system inside the microscope, there's going to be issues of, well, what's the processing power of the computer and mm -hmm. uh, GPU, and, um, and this will also be a bottleneck for the, for the adaption of uh, artificial uh, intelligence even within our system. Mm -hmm. 
you said at the beginning you have worked in different um, medical device industries and then you ended up in digital pathology why did you stay there why digital pathology what was so different than the other uh, areas in digital pathology that you decided to continue there uh, hmm. well the main the main thing is that okay we, we came up with this idea and we really just it, it's it's, it resonated so so much that, that there's a need for it then. So there is that being connected to to an idea, mm -hmm. uh, which which is personal. But but more than that, I, I think that pathology or, or, or digital pathology is um, there are a lot of promises being made in digital pathology, and 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 a lot of these were based on, well, and based on a number of things where you could say it's based on the success of digital radiology or, or other, other reasons why there was a lot of hype for digital pathology. And, and there's, with that, with any, with any hype, there's generally a lot of groupthink and ideas which are accepted by many aren't necessarily the, the best idea or the, even the correct idea. So, I, I think that also sort of fit my personality and that I've always tried to not be a groupthink individual and that to, to think and to uh, look at each situation and um, to, reach a, to reach a decision on my own. And that, and that really follows through with like life changes, life uh, decisions that I made in terms of like how I got to where I am today. Uh, making decisions which definitely didn't, uh, didn't fit the norm. And so that that really fit into to our product and like looking and you just talked about how there's no competition for mm -hmm. the direct competitor for what we're doing uh the, reaching an idea which totally breaks the norm for for where other technologies are at or where the entire industry is at but still believing that there's there's uh there's a truth to it that there's uh, there's a need for it there's there's value in it and being able to uh follow through on that uh conviction mm -hmm. I'm happy because I'm a pathologist <laughs> and I'm happy that you decided to do that. One thing that is very important to me, because I also have the background of having worked in a digital pathology company, but as a pathologist, how do you work with pathologists for developing your products? So we've, we've been fortunate, uh, I guess it, part of the, the benefit and value of uh, of being a startup, but also being a, a slow initial um, sales uh, uptake of the product and, and adaption is we we value each each client and each customer, and we're always looking to improve the product. So from from every sale that just about every sale that we've made, we've really I would say that, that we've gained a lot more. Then, then in terms of like any value which we've, we've actually made given to the product itself, <laughs> well, it's like getting, getting the feedback. We've, we've had such, such incredible feedback from pathologists to how to improve the system that, uh, it, it, it's almost, I would say that in every software version which is being released today, there's, it's, it comes about from direct feedback from a user saying, Hey, it would be really great if you could do this. Do you think it's possible? And then, mm -hmm. Within a within a few days, maximum a week, we'll uh, we'll have a new software uh, version released, which solves or answers that need. So uh -huh. we're, we're very much uh, the makeup of the company, very much one that uh, listens to the feedback from the pathologist. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that I think that's the reason why um, why we've uh, had initial success is when when we first started the company. It was, Hearing pathologists say, you know, the, the most important thing for us is telepathology. And so that's where we put our focus. And right when we had that, the, the solution, immediately reaching, reaching a sale, uh, which in itself is, is a very interesting story because, like, generally, like, I guess, a very, maybe it's sort of a, um, a stereotype, but a very hard country or a very hard place to sell into without a lot of um, proof that it works is Japan. That mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 very conservative 
with, uh, with new technologies, especially technologies which are developed uh, outside, outside the country. Mm-hmm. And let's say even more so in the field of optics where you have Olympus, Nikon, uh, Hamamatsu, optics in, in Japan is, is make an argument as to where the best is, but it, it's up there in the top uh, two, three countries. And here we are with a, a new product that fits inside the microscope. And the first sale that we've had was essentially to a Japanese pathologist wanting to know what's going on with their clinical studies overseas. So it's a selling, selling a telepathology solution to them. And, but this was brought about because listening to pathologists tell us, well, you know, it, the most important thing is telepathology and this is what's necessary or this is how the system should work where it could bring the most value. Mm-hmm. You mentioned AI uh, before. Do you mm-hmm. already incorporate AI, artificial intelligence in your product? Uh, yes. Yes, we do. We started work with a AI uh, company based in India mm-hmm. and we are about to start our first study dealing with uh, fatty, fatty liver mm-hmm. and utilizing AI to, to detect and quantify uh, the percentage of uh, a fatty liver in the tissue, which is, and, and this will be done inside the microscope. So this is super exciting because this is going to be the first time that AI is being deployed inside the microscope. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're super excited about it. Okay. But, it, it, but it's not just... When it comes to AI, it's not just the deployment of, of artificial intelligence inside the microscope, but we're also working with other companies with actual training of AI. And this, this is really interesting because today, the way that algorithms are being trained is uh, there will be a scan of the of WSI, and then a pathologist will, will come in and annotate this, uh, this data. Mm-hmm. So when I remember seeing this, uh, probably going a few years ago, uh, it was from Lee Ron Pentanowitz, who's a, he's a pathologist at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Mm-hmm. And he had this nice little sort of, um, um, it would be almost a cartoon, but it, basically what it, it was called garbage in, garbage out. Where, oh, I can so much relate to that. <laughs> so you have like, imagine, it's not even gigabytes, right? so it's like, terabytes and terabytes of clinically useless data, which mm-hmm. is being pushed into these uh, through the algorithm algorithms, and that's what's being used to to train AI. So there's a lot of noise, which is going into the development of these algorithms. So one of the things which are applications which our system is being used for today is also the the collection of data sets for training of AI, and the way that we do this is we collect images on the fly during the workflow and mm-hmm. we know basically everything about the image. We know the X, Y, we know the, uh, we can know the slide label, we know the objective and we're basically able to take all the information uh, of the pathologist or, or, or of the, like maybe the metadata and then tie that in with the action or the workflow of the pathologist. So let's say the pathologist is looking at a slide and stops and at a 4X and stops for a second. So an image will be taken and there'll be a score given based on, I guess, relatively low importance because uh, it was just a second stop, like a stop made for a second at a low bank computation. But if mm-hmm. a pathologist, um, let's say, changes from uh, a 10 to a 20 or makes an annotation or saves an image or mm-hmm. whatever, any, every, every action is able to be translated into an image taken and a relative score based on perceived value or importance of the of the action of the pathologist. So now what we have is this sort of like uh, weighted collection of annotations. Exactly, and it's all being done in real time. So and and on the fly. So it's a very low cost, but very highly efficient in terms of time and in terms of the value of the of the uh, of the image. And, but and and then at the same time very low data usage because we're only taking an individual image. We're not scanning. So you take all this together, we're able to build up data sets, which could also be annotated uh, and then used for training AI. So I I think that this is really exciting. There's a number of um, organizations which are using this application today for training algorithms. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's novel as well.
Great. Anything else that you want to tell our listeners that I didn't ask so far? Uh, well, let's see. There, there is a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot that we didn't go into. Might have to have another session in the future to discuss. You them. definitely keep me updated with the results of your project, and I will be more than happy to talk again about particular particular things that we didn't touch today. This was just a general overview um, what the company is doing and and mm -hmm. how it came to being. But we just stay in touch and we just do another episode together. Excellent. One, one more thing before we go, tell the listeners where they can find you online to learn more, more about uh, Augmentix and about the company's offer. Okay, so Augmentix.com, that's uh, the company's website. There's uh, also, if for information in particular to, I guess, telepathology for in the field of toxicologic pathology, so there's a study which has already been published in uh, both the uh, Journal of Toxicologic Pathology and the, it's the Japanese Society of Toxicologic Pathology. Both, uh, both of them have a, uh, an article, a peer-reviewed article published over there. Mm -hmm. and I will put these in the show notes as well, the links to the articles. Mm -hmm. And uh, soon uh, there should be some publications coming out in the, in the field of the clinical pathology for, for different studies which are being performed at a number of hospitals uh, in the States today. Okay, great. Thank you so much for talking to me uh, and for accepting my invitation. And um, I wish you all the best and have a great day. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you for listening. For more great digital pathology resources, visit the Digital Pathology Consulting website and subscribe to our newsletter on digitalpathologyconsulting.com. After subscribing, you will get access to the free annotation guidelines, which will help you annotate slides consistently in all your digital pathology projects. Talk to you in the next episode.